Hey everyone, it's Amanda and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a yarn painting. When I say yarn painting, I literally mean just like making a painting with yarn, I guess. I had no idea what else to call it and that is the only logical title I could give this fun craft. Um, but I am making this video because super exciting news. I am going to be having these yarn paintings available as kits in my Etsy shop that I will go ahead and link down in the description box below. You know, I've had so many questions on my Instagram um, when I post these fun little yarn paintings on how I do them, and I figured it'd be a lot easier if I just offered them as kits. So with that being said, I thought it would be super helpful to film a video on how I do these. So you guys could have a reference to look on when you buy your kits. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to be able to make one of these yarn paintings, all you're going to need is a thin canvas. I use 9 by 12 um, flat canvases from Michaels. I think they're called Artist Mind or something like that. You're also going to need some yarn, preferably just some scrap yarn you have hanging around. And to make your yarn painting stand out a little bit more and make it look a little bit more finished and professional, you'll also want to get a frame. Uh, this is a 9 by 12 frame that I got off of Amazon. And actually, this is a little bit of a surprise announcement. This is the first time I've ever done something like this. But I'm actually going to be offering kits in my Etsy shop for anyone who would like to try yarn painting at home and don't necessarily want to buy all the materials themselves. So in the kit, you're going to it's going to include the frame the canvas with the printed artwork that you would like. I'm going to have a few options available that this will be cellophane wrapped so it is nice and safe on transport. You're also going to get a little frame hook so you're able to hang up your wall hanging. And you're also going to get some yarn. This is going to be optional. Um, um, you can either choose to um, have the yarn in your kit or not. It is completely up to you. Some people prefer to use just some scrap yarn that they have laying around the house. Um, other materials that you're going to need that are not going to be available in the kits are going to be Mod Podge. I just use Mod Podge Matte. This is the best kind of glue-like material that I found works best on the canvas and keeps the yarn from moving and budging and it dries matte so you can't even see it. It's nice and invisible. A paintbrush, preferably one that you don't like very much because we're using glue. It could get a little nasty and stiff. Um, I prefer to use an angled brush. It's just easier to kind of get around the lined parts with the glue. And lastly, you're going to need some scissors or snippers to be able to trim the yarn as you work. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so before you even get started, you do want to go ahead and do some planning or some, uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, just kind of setting up your space, I guess, <laughs> um, before you get started so you're not having to juggle everything um, once you get started. So what I like to do is, of course, pick my yarn colors. Again, um, I will have yarn color choices available in my Etsy shop with the kit, but please feel free if you're not using the kit or if you get the kit without the yarn, please feel free to use any color that you want. Um, I just use a, a light worsted weight yarn. And I'm also going to go ahead and prep my Mod Podge. I'm just, I just use a scrap piece of paper on the side and I put a little dollop on the sheet of paper that I can dip my paintbrush in to work as I go. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the flower pot first, which I'm going to do in this kind of dusty brown color. So to get started, what I like to do is before I start filling in the space, I like to outline it first just to kind of give me a good um, starting spot. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to take my paintbrush. I'm just going to dip it in some of that Mod Podge. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of dab the paint. Or not the paint. <laughs> the glue all around the edge and just kind of do a little bit of a you know not too large of a surface area because you don't want it to start drying before you're able to start laying the yarn down so I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this tip because it's a little fluffy because I want to have nice straight tips so what you're gonna do 
it's just going to start at the starting point here and just kind of guard your yarn along that line of glue and just kind of manipulate it around as you go. And once it starts to dry, it is a lot easier to manipulate because it gets a little tacky and sticky. So if you have to go back and kind of, you know, manipulate it a little bit more to kind of get the shape that you're looking for, please feel free to do so. I also um, sometimes will cut off the yarn here and then kind of work my way back around with a new strip of yarn just to kind of give that nice sharp edge. But it, again, it's completely up to you on how you want to proceed. So again, I'm just going to continue around like so. Just kind of dabbing glue as I go just so it doesn't dry up on me. And sometimes if you're, you know, working different areas, your yarn can kind of get attached to the glue in areas that you're not currently working, which can get super duper annoying. So that's why I kind of like to work maybe three inches of glue at a time. Let's see if we get that a little bit of a sharper line here. It's definitely not perfect. <laughs> But for the sake of the video, we'll go ahead and keep going because I could sit here forever and kind of wait for it to dry and manipulate it a little bit more. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and keep going. So again, you just kind of manipulate the yarn until you're happy with the shape. And then once I get up here, I'm going to go ahead and snip this off like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some more glue up here and again, I'm just going what I think will look best you're more than welcome to place the glue and the yarn and you know whatever areas you think is going to look nice or in whatever technique you'd like to use so to, again to make that sharper edge I'm going to go ahead and place that yarn on its own here Right, I'm going to cut it off right here at the edge, just like that. And again, now that the glue is starting to dry a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and start manipulating it just a little bit more. Let's see if I can get the shape that I'm looking for. All right. I think that looks all right. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to filling the vase. So now that we have a nice outline, all we're gonna have to do is just literally fill in this space. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start down here and just kind of put just a, a grouping of glue right here, making sure to take it all the way to the edge. And then I'm just going to Get that piece of yarn as close to the edge as possible and just start placing the yarn like so. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog. We just went out for the walk or walk and it's really hot outside so she's kind of having issues. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and use my snippers here to kind of make sure that I'm nice and close to the edge making sure everything lays flat and then i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing since i've got a little bit more glue on the canvas there we go again just kind of manipulating it with my scissors get into the areas that maybe might be a little bit too difficult for my fingers or because i have a little bit of glue on my finger the yarn kind of stick to it and pull up and you could also use the back of your paintbrush also you don't have to use scissors so you kind of use the paintbrush to kind of move where you want that yarn to go and get it right there 
to the edge. Gonna push that down. And again, once it starts drying, or once it has dry, so if there's a little bit of a ledge here, like you can see, um, I'll go back in once everything's dry and kind of use my snippers and kind of trim things up a little bit. Um, or you can go ahead and once it's dry, put a little bit of Mod Podge there on the end and just kind of push it down with a couple of flat edges or your finger just to kind of get it to lay down a little bit flatter. So I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of this pot in and then I'm going to come back and we'll start doing the leaves. All right, so I have finished the vase. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the leaves and show you how I do that. So again, I just placed a little bit more Mod Podge on my scrap piece of paper. I'm going to kind of wipe off my paintbrush a little bit because it because we're working with glue it can kind of goop up on there and it also gives it a little bit more of a straighter edge when you kind of wipe off all the the ick <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and get started with the leaves i'm going to go ahead and take my second color and start working my way around now what i like to do is i like to go um leaf by leaf so i'll start here and then I'll work around the leaf and then I'll go and work each other leaf or each and every leaf separately. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do one of the leaves. So again, just like we did with the vase, we're just going to take some of our Mod Podge here and start working our way around. And again, if you get a little bit messy with the Mod Podge, because it's matte, um, you really can't see it and especially if you're going to be using a uh, frame to put it in you're not going to be able to see it through the frame and if it's going to be hanging up on your wall without a frame you're not going to be able to see it anyways because it dries clear all right so let's go ahead and get started so I'm going to start here right here at the base try to get it as close as possible and then I'm going to start working my way around here all right and to get that nice sharp edge I'm going to go ahead and snip off that yarn here and then pick it up again by placing the yarn here working my way back around and then I'm going to stop here because this is where the branch or the the stem meets the leaves so i'm going to cut that here and then i'll pick up again to make sure that edge is nice and sharp and then i just kind of pinch the outside of the leaf to make it nice and pointy just like that and now i'm going to go ahead and start filling in the center the way i like to fill in the center of the leaf is to follow the exact shape that I did just for the outline of the leaf. I'm going to go ahead and just fill in the entire leaf with some Mod Podge. And if things start to move around, again, once the Mod Podge starts to dry, it'll get tacky and it'll make it a little bit easier to start moving stuff around and securing it into place when it's a little bit more tacky than wet. So again, I'm just going to that yarn piece there just start working my way around just like that again snip it right here at the tip secure that in place and then come back around Try to get it as close to the to the tip as possible. It's kind of maneuvering everything around. Again, you can take the paintbrush, kind of push things into place so you really can't get with your finger. Kind of maneuver it around, and then f lift it up just a little bit so you can find where that edge is. Snip it. Kind of move it around just like that and then we're going to repeat the same step I'm going to 
stick that in the corner there. Start working my way around. Lift it up a little bit so I could find the edge. Snip it off. And just kind of working it around. See if we can hide some of those white spots of the canvas. Just kind of move in some of these around. And again, because this has a little bit of a fluffy tip, I'm going to go ahead and snip that off because because we're working with pointy edges, I kind of want it to be as smooth as possible. Let's see if we can't get that in there. Just like that. Take my paintbrush. Just kind of maneuvering that around. And lift that up so I can find the corner there. Kind of moving that around. Do that one more time, or maybe two more times. We'll see. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do it two more times. So we're gonna go ahead and move that over just enough to where I can fit one last piece of yarn. I'm gonna go ahead and lift that and cut this so I can kind of manipulate it a little better. Kind of scooch it as far as I can, just like that. Kind of scooch this over. There we go. And I'm gonna put in this last piece of yarn, kind of snip off the end. Kind of smush it in there. And if it seems like it's not sticking very well, I'm gonna go ahead and just take the pointy side of my paintbrush and just kind of dab some glue on there. If you lift up your yarn a little bit, it's totally fine. Again, just wait till um, the glue gets a little bit more tacky before you start moving things around. I'm going to go ahead and take the, see what I mean? It just kind of, when it's wet, it just kind of lifts up. So if it does that, no worries. Just kind of secure it as best as you can in the place where you'd like it to stay and let it dry for a little bit. And then go back and kind of make adjustments as you go. still kind of lifting up so I'm just gonna try to secure see it just came out oh so annoying and I might add that might happen a bunch but now that I've got oh my god I just took another piece okay see this is a perfect example of why you want to wait for the glue to kind of set before you start moving stuff around so I'm just gonna go ahead and try this again I'm kind of glad that happened so you guys are able to see how I kind of make it work when that happens so again just moving it into place stick that piece there kind of smush it in there okay now that I know better I'm gonna leave it leave it let it sit for a little while once I work up more of the leaves so it gets kind of tacky and then when I've waited maybe two or three minutes I'll go back and kind of manipulate it a little bit more and I don't know if you could see the little white bits here where that glue is that will dry clear like I said it'll be matte so you won't even be able to see it but I'm going to go ahead and let that sit and dry and get tacky and then I'm going to go ahead and work up the rest of the leaves and I will be back to show you how I fill in the stem. Okay, so now that I have the leaves all filled in I'm going to go ahead and fill in these gaps um, for this stem. I tried to fill in the stem as much as I could with the leaves but I didn't want it to be too cluttered so I'm going to go ahead and just gently fill in the rest of these gaps is 
carefully as I can because I do not want a repeat of what happened down here. I don't want the yarn to come out because it is super duper annoying when it happens. So I'm just going to be placing a little piece up here just to fill in that gap. I'm going to lift it up, see where I can find that. And, oh, see? Oh, every time. I think it's my finger. I think it's because I have all this glue residue on my finger that it just kind of sticks to it. But I will fix. There we go. Oh, I don't want to touch it again because I know it's just going to come off. All right, I'm going to leave it and then I will come back to it unless or this is probably going to come off. Oh. Okay, I think I'm pushing my luck now, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. <laughs> and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one longer strip and I'm going to fill in this gap right here in the middle to finish it off. Let's see if I can fill this in without anything coming off. I mean, honestly, like I'd rather do a long one than a short one because it's so much easier to kind of manipulate the longer pieces than it is the shorter pieces. <sighs> but you can't skip over the the smaller pieces because you'll see a, like a bunch of gaps in it and I don't want that. Well, at least uh, for me personally, I wouldn't want that, but it's totally up to you. It does not have to be perfect by any means because anything handmade shouldn't be perfect anyways because it's handmade and not machine made. All right, so I'm just using a combination of my sticky fingers <laughs> and the back of my, oh, see, oh. Oh my god! See, it's so, it's sometimes so annoying when you do it. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and start over. But it's so, it looks so pretty when it's done. So I'm just gonna put more glue there and I'm not gonna push my luck and touch it because I make this, it's, I literally make the same mistake over and over and over again. You'd think I learn. But I don't. All right, get up here as close as we can. Use back of our paintbrush to kind of push all those ends in. And then I'm gonna find the end here, snip it off, push it down in there. Gonna roll it around. Trying my best not to ruin it again. Because I want to keep touching it, but I know if I keep touching it, it's gonna come out again. Okay. I think we got it. Let's see what we can see. Ooh, that's pretty. See, and it is super easy. I know I'm making a big deal out of the pieces coming out, but it really it really doesn't happen as often as, you know, I am kind of making it out to be. I don't even know what I'm saying. But it is just such a simple, easy project, and it looks great in a frame and makes a great piece of home decor in your home. And it's meaningful because you made it yourself, so you can always gift it to someone for a um, a home homewarming present. Is that what they call it? <laughs> Oh, a housewarming present or just a gift for Christmas, birthday, you know, whatever holiday. You know, it's just something nice and it's handmade, so it's super thoughtful. All right, well, I am so glad you guys stuck around with me and listened to me whine about the yarn coming off. Um, I hope this was super fun for you to learn and uh, super helpful for you to find ways to use up your scrap yarn. Again, I do have a kit available now in my Etsy shop if you are interested in trying this on your own and um, again I do offer kits with and without the yarn if you have your own yarn that you'd like to use or other scrap pieces of yarn that you have that you think would look good with this design. Um, I'm not sure how many designs I'm going to have available at first. Um, I'm kind of doing this just as a trial basis for now but hopefully I will have more designs offered up soon. And with that being said, I am going to go ahead and go, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.